how a volcano eruption in Ethiopia has affected India. It is sending ash high into the sky. Now the eruption is already shaking up air travel thousands of kilometers away in Pakistan and India. How are air plumes and jet streams responsible for worsening EQI that you will see in the country? What India needs to prepare for and what are the consequences? A dormant volcano in Ethiopia has tore open after a millennia and the ash plume was so huge that it has traveled across nations, deserts and sea and it has already entered Delhi's already toxic airspace. Hello everyone, welcome to Vajram and Ravi's Flash News. My name is Shubhangi Singh and today we are going to talk about this volcanic eruption in Ethiopia, how it happened, what are the terms around it and also most importantly how it has reached to India, how it is affecting India and what are the implications around it. So let us start with the volcanic eruption itself. So this volcanic eruption has taken place in the highly Gubbi volcano and this volcano is specifically located in the Afar region in northern Ethiopia. So when you see this is the particular location of the volcano that we are talking about and the most important thing to know about this volcano as of now is the fact that this was a dormant volcano. So when we are talking about volcano types then based on their eruptions and the frequency of eruptions they are broadly categorized into two. First we have active volcanoes, second we have dormant volcanoes. Active volcanoes are the ones which frequently erupt, dormant volcanoes are the ones which have not erupted for the very long time or in the recent known times. And here Haile Gobi was a dormant volcano which has erupted stunningly after 12,000 years. Now when we are talking about this volcanic eruption as it is occurring after almost a millennia it becomes important for us to understand that how come a dormant volcano erupted that to this violently and what are the factors behind it. So when we are talking about volcanic eruptions one most important thing that you need to understand is that how directly it is associated to the plate tectonics. So when we are talking about tectonic plates we already know that you can imagine earth's crust to be form of broken pieces which are moving over the molten lava just to explain to you simply. Now when we are talking about the region where this particular eruption has taken place this is a place where three boundaries are located for example we have the African plate right here we have the Somalian plate right here and we have the Arabian plate right here. And when we talk about the boundary of Somalian as well as African plate, this is as of now a divergent boundary where the plates are going away from each other and that is why there has been creation of East African rift also. Now this will give you a clearer insight that why volcanic eruption has happened especially in a dormant volcano. Now because of this rifting that is taking place at the triple junction of three plates, African plate, Somalian plate and Arabian plate, there was continuous crustal thinning that was happening. So if this is the crust and gradually it is thinning, now then the possibility of magma outflow becomes much more. Now in this very scenario it also becomes important for us to understand like what kind type of volcano we had in front of us. So when we are talking about types of volcano based on shape we have two broad categories again. We have shield volcanoes and then we have composite volcanoes. Shield volcanoes are the ones where we see lesser steep present and here the lava flows to a very long distance that is why you will see the shape of shield here 
and because the lava is less viscous that is why it travels great distance and that is why this particular formation takes place when we are talking about composite volcanoes we get to see that the lava is highly viscous and that is why it doesn't get to travel much and that is why the height of volcanoes goes on increasing there are other ones as well such as lava domes then we have cinder cones in terms of shape but these are the two broad categories now when we are talking about this particular volcano it was a shield volcano and when we are talking about thinning of the crust here this is where the vent was formed and this huge eruption took place now another important dimension that comes here is that how this eruption occurred so the first thing that, that we know that there was continuous thinning of crust there was tectonical divergence that was taking place and this was the divergence that was responsible for lifting magma rapidly and because of the sudden pressure release that happened the explosive vertical ash plume was seen now when we are talking about that this particular term that is ash plume it basically refers to a towering and a vertical column of gas volcanic gases rock materials which are thrown up through the vent of a volcano and in this situation the ash column of this particular volcanic eruption reached up to 14 to 15 km into the atmosphere that means upper parts of troposphere and certain areas of stratosphere have been touched and this emission ash plumes usually include not just volcanic ash but also so2 trace aerosols as well as rock materials as well so if we are talking about ash plumes they can be of multiple kinds based on the scale of eruption and the material that they are carrying they can be a strong plume intermediate or the weak one so when we are talking about a strong one it is buoyancy dominated because of the pressure that has been released but when we are talking about weak plumes they are not dominated by buoyancy rather they are dominated by the wind that is around now now that we have understood how this has occurred now let us talk about the impacts on ground impact on the very country that it saw ash covered villages shock waves of this particular volcanic eruptions were felt and evacuations have been taking place but the more interesting part here is that it is not only ethiopia that has been affected this effect has reached up to our country as well and the first question that comes should come to your mind that how come a country in east africa is impacting the volcanic eruption is impacting india here so first let us try to understand that how the ash from east africa has reached india so when we are talking about the movement of whole of the ash so you have to see that we are talking about this is the place where the eruption has taken place and we are situated here right so the movement must have occurred in this direction and there must have been enough material that it could have been carried throughout this and there must have been something that has carried it just to make you believe or make you understand that this has actually happened if you see the air space the warnings have been issued the volcanic eruption has been marked here and the air space of not just northern india but also you see certain parts of nepal and the northeast india these are the places where advisories have been issued flight cancellations have taken place the route formation that has taken place from ethiopia it has moved towards yemen then from yemen you see towards oman arabian sea and that is where it has entered gujarat and then it has gone to affect regions such as rajasthan delhi haryana and punjab but again the question remains how now let us talk about how we understand that this is done by wind but what kind of wind this is something that becomes important here so now we are going to talk about something called jet streams now when i talked about the ash plume i did mention that this vertical column easily touched more than 9 to 14 kilometers right and when we are talking about jet streams these are narrow high speed winds which are running in small bands of columns in upper atmosphere so 
jet streams are also in running in this particular range right can you tell me in the comment section what is their movement direction from west to east or east to west i'll tell you the answer also so this is the band of wind which is moving and this band of wind moves at the strong speed of 100 to 120 km per hour now because the movement is from west to east now when you will see in this particular map you will find that there is a westerly jet stream which is moving from the east african region towards india and this is where we got to see the movement of ash through subtropical westerly jet stream towards india now it has given high speed 100 to 120 kilometers there is minimal obstruction because if we are talking about the altitude at which it is present there, there we get to see minimum obstruction and the seasonal winter jet stream has been in place it is aligned and it is present which has facilitated the movement towards our country itself now when we are talking about plume as i mentioned it has volcanic material it has rock material it has sulfur dioxide and also there are silicate particles which are present here so these all have come to india via jet streams now they were supposed to arrive this particular morning so if you are in the regions of rajasthan punjab delhi haryana gujarat you will see certain amount of haze and especially in delhi where there is already a toxic air space air pollution there will be a further addition that will be seen so as an impact of india we just do not have avian disruption because volcanic ash is very dangerous for aircrafts it easily melts the insides of engines it abrades the windshields and it also reduces visibility as well as damages the sensors which are present that is why advisory has been issued multiple flights have been cancelled apart from that when we are talking about impact on india another thing that will be impacted will be air quality as will be as well as public health so when we are talking aqi because it is also already so worsened there will be no significant worsening that will be seen but we might see certain rise especially in terms of so2 level especially in delhi rajasthan oh, up the terai region i'm talking about northern up and also nepal foothills so that is specifically for the so2 levels other than that we might also get to see also get to see that there is some ash fall that means the ash which is coming via all the region through ethiopia it might get settled and because of that we might get to see the deposition on the ground but the concentration is very limited so it is expected that there will be no severe ash fall as a consequence we might be seeing because so2 irritates lungs and eyes this is very difficult it is going to be a difficult time for the people with asthma people who are elderly and as well as children will be exposed to many health concerns it will also come with environmental as well as climatic effects because the upper atmosphere layers will be hazy there will be slight reduction in the solar radiation which will intensify the temperature inversion and also the pollution that we are talking about in the given region. regions and there might be certain disturbance to the flight level weather systems as well long term effects are mostly unlikely here they might be seen in the region where volcanic eruption has happened if you are talking about highly gubbi the so2 load is insufficient for global climate impact but there are volcanic eruptions which have had global climate impact as well can you give me examples of those in the comment section and when we are talking about regional implications the main concern again remains the so2 itself and the deposition which might also take place in the areas near the himalayas and cross border atmospheric monitoring will be required to manage all of this so as of now there is not a severe consequence that we are looking at but then again it was already way beyond in terms of air pollution in terms of consequences that we are seeing that will be added to so i hope you are clear with the important concepts related to the volcanoes 
and you have a clarity that how this has traveled to India. Now on this note, I'll be leaving you with a practice question. Look at the question, you can put down the answers in the comment section. I will be revealing the answer of these questions on the very next video. The answer of the yesterday's video is also present here, which was related to the red corridor. The correct answer here is A. That was all for today. Thank you so much.